G'day everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from the studio today and just wanted to show you this video on Premiere Pro Basics. I've had a few questions, quite a lot of questions actually about what I edit with and yeah, just answering some questions for some of you. Maybe you've come across from Final Cut Pro to Premiere and it's a bit foreign or perhaps you're just new to video editing. Well, this video is for you. And some of you old dogs out there who uh, have been using Premiere for a while, I'm sure I can teach you some new tricks as well. So let's have a look at the basics first up and we'll jump on over to the screen and why don't we get straight into this video. So let's open Premiere as a first step. And it will load up to like a project screen, like a splash screen, and we can get started from there. While it loads, I'll just let you know about my day. It was a crazy day, so busy. Um, super tired now, it's evening here, but I wanted to get this out as part of the 30 day challenge. So every second day I'm putting up content and I've got a crazy busy schedule, contracting and a new video. I just got first video of 2019, big video client. So I'm also working on the concept for that. But anyway, here I am you guys giving this information out to you because I just want to help you this year in 2019 to learn the basics and learn how to edit uh, your videos. So here is the splash screen that you can see now and I'm going to click new project here and just on the desktop I'm going to create a project called PP Basics. So it's already existing because I already just created it just before. I jumped on here with you guys, but here it is here. So this is a brand new uh, clean version of Premiere and I'm coming in here to the effects panel. So the effects window, I guess you could call it. These are all kind of like different uh, panels, I suppose. So if we click to learning, this is pretty cool because it does have the ability for you to learn uh, different things. It can, you've got a basics tutorial within Premiere. So if you've got 15 minutes, that's great. You can jump across to that and learn. But hey, it's better to listen to me teaching you how to use it for sure than anything that they've provided there. So you've also got like an assembly tab, which is where you would see your timeline or sequence, both the same thing. I might use timeline or sequence as two different words to basically describe all the clips in a long line and you'll see that in a minute. You've then got your editing window where you can get in and edit your footage and this is a really good way once you've got footage inside the program where you can do all your editing. And I think this is where we're going to start in a little bit. You've also got color, effects, audio, graphics and libraries which is different graphics and different libraries uh, that you have within Premiere Pro CC. So let's jump into the editing here and I'm going to start in this bottom right window here called the, sorry, bottom left window called the import media window. And along the top here, you've got a bunch of different uh, checks as well. And you can set that up as however you want, but let's just start here in the projects, PP basics, and I'm going to import footage into here. What I'm going to do to do it is right click and import. This is kind of the way I do it. Sometimes I drag it across from uh, my finder directly into this window, which you can also do. But in this case, I'm just going to dump some files in here. Now the files I'm looking at here on my main RAID array, and it's of this vlog one here where it was editing in Adobe Premiere Pro CC BTS. So this was a video I did, if you want to check it out, I'll link it above, where I basically edited some footage that I shot, an interview that I shot in Premiere Pro to kind of show you some of the ways that I edit my own footage and footage that I shoot uh, of corporate clients. If you wanted to get a little bit more in depth into how I use Premiere Pro, then take a look at that linked video. I'll also throw it below in the description. So let's just jump into here and I'm going to go into footage and I'm going to just dump in like three clips of that footage into my timeline and click import. So it's going to go ahead and dump those clips in to my timeline here. 
sorry, it's going to dump those clips into my project bin here. So now that the clips are in this bin, what I'm going to do is create a file called footage. And I'm just going to clean it up a bit by adding these clips into the footage bin. I'm then going to go new bin. You can do that with a right click as well. And I'm going to call this sequence. So basically now I'm setting up just some file structures here within Premiere to make sure that everything stays neat and tidy. All right, so there's a number of ways that you can get this footage into the timeline or the sequence as it's called. And currently it's telling me my timeline but has no sequences in my timeline. So one of the ways you can do it is you select all the footage, you right click on it and you select new sequence from clip. Now that'll place all those clips in a new sequence and therefore your timeline now has a sequence and it's named 1x1a1951 which is the first clip. So I actually want to rename that. I can just click on the sequence to rename it and I want to call this sequence, um, let's just call it sequence 1. So that renames it there and also renames it in the sequence window as well or let's sorry say the timeline window as well so now i've got it in there i'm just going to delete it out and i'm actually going to delete it from here as well and i'll show you a second way of putting the clips into the timeline as a sort of second step within premiere you can drag the clips down to this tab here which is the new item tab and you can drop it on the new item tab and that will also set it up in exactly the same way as I did before by right by selecting all right clicking and asking it to create a new sequence it's done the exact same thing now the reason why those two methods are great is because it, this creates your sequence in the same format as the clips were shot so let me just show you up in here in sequence settings drop into sequence settings. Now these clips were shot in 4K on the Canon EOS R. So basically now you can see here that it's 3840 by 2160 at 25 frames per second. So that's how it's created this timeline. Now say for example, I wanna export this final in 1920 by 1080. Then I've got some 60p clips that are shot in 1920 that I wanna overlay. So I'm gonna change this sequence right in here to 1920 by 1080 and it's still all at 25 frames per second everything's the same so I'm going to click OK on that now what that's effectively done is it's actually resized the timeline down to a 1920 by 1080p full HD timeline but it hasn't yet resized the clips so one of the things you can do is you can right click on the clip and say scale to frame size so that will then bring the clip down to my 1920 by 1080p timeline and I'm going to right click this select both of those other clips right click and do the same scale to frame size so that then scales the clip down to the same size as the um, timeline or sequence should i say settings so now the clips fit within that sequence and this will export at 1920 by 1080 or full hd so the third thing now is uh, editing and working with the clips in Premiere. Now you can use the spacebar here to play the sequence. You can hit the spacebar to stop the sequence. You can use these controls here. So let's just go through those. So the first one of these is the selection tool and you can use that just to select each clip to move the clip, to move the clips back and forward, up and down, left to right, that kind of thing. Uh, the next one is you can select everything ahead of the arrows. So if I click there, it'll select everything ahead. If I click there, it'll select just these two. If I click there, it'll just select the end two. Now this is really great if you've got a lot going on in your timeline and the timeline is stretched all the way along, then you can just basically select and drag like that and that works really well for long timelines. Uh, the next one down is the ripple edit tool and maybe we'll leave that for a more complex one a more complex tutorial you don't really need to worry about that just yet if you're just starting out but the razor tool is one that you will be using a lot of and the razor tool is basically your tool to cut so you can use it to cut your footage where you want to make those cuts 
and then you can select the footage and move it to where you want after making those cuts. So the razor tool is a way to do that. Uh, the other tool here probably worthwhile looking at is the pan tool. Basically this tool allows you to pan inside the timeline so you can basically drop, drop that in and just pan anywhere you want in the timeline. But what I do is I've got a mighty mouse that I use which is one of these and the scroll wheel on that mouse allows me to pan the timeline so I don't really generally use that pan feature uh, very often in the timeline um, because I normally just have it on the razor tool and I use my mighty mouse to pan back and forward. Alright so next in the timeline probably is the source clip info and the source clip window. Now what this basically is if I double click on this one first uh, video file here what it will do is it will bring up bring it up in what's called my source window now this is great for sorting through clips so say I want to sort through this clip and find out where I started uh, to talk so let's say here I start talking when my head's a little bit in frame I can press the I key and the I key will set my in point and then I drag along further and I can press the O key and the O will set my out point. I for in, O for out. So that's basically now set and I can either drag this clip in to my timeline, the whole clip, which you can see there is dragged in the clip and it's audio, or I can select of these two here, I can drag just the audio in like that, or I can drag just the video in like that. Now that's a great way when you're sorting through B-roll clips or you just want to grab a quick snippet and you don't necessarily need the audio, that's a perfect way to do that. But basically you can do that with every single clip and then when you come back to the clip it remembers your in point and out points. So that's how you use the source monitor. Now let's quickly look at the effects control. This is basically where you can scale the clip, you can position the clip up and down, left and right you can use opacity so you can remove opacity or increase opacity uh, you've got volume level controls here you can up the volume of the clip you can um, take it back to zero you can set keyframe automations here which is another for another video it's quite complex stuff as well I'll just delete those automations out but basically the effects panel or effects control allows you to control any effects that are already on the clip or the positioning of the clip and also effects that you apply to the clip. All right, well, I think that gets us pretty much done on the basics. Let's say you want to get a cut done sort of here where the image starts to move. So let's say I want to cut it before it moves. So right about there. I press the C key to bring up the razor tool and I can cut it and then I can move to where the frame is the next frame and I can bring those two together. So now in my edit there, you know, I've got this cut, boom, boom. So basically that shows you how you can then manipulate and rearrange your clips. Now, a few little tips before I leave you is there's a really good way to review your footage. So once you've cut your timeline, again, in the actual timeline, you can press I for in point and O for out point, and then you go up to sequence and render in to out. Now what this does is basically renders a real time viewable uh, clip or I guess video file so that you can then review this back in real time. So it renders out the files and it renders all your effects on the files and it renders it to a video. And basically then what you can do is you can watch this back in real time. So let me just cancel it there. But basically if you've got a computer that's not running as fast or if you've got a lot of effects on the clip, it won't actually play back in real time. So this is a way where you can get it to render it out and get it to play back in real time. So I'm just gonna play this back now. And as you can see, the line above here has gone green, which means it's been rendered out. 
And so this is a really awesome way to uh, get your footage to be, you know, be able to review your footage in real time when you've got color grades and masks and all sorts of different effects on it. You can review it in real time. And the in point and out point is great for that. Now, the other thing that you can do when you're reviewing full time is there's a really cool little hack that's the control key with the tilde key. So a lot of uh, key things revolve around the tilde key to bring things full screen within Premiere. So essentially what it does is command tilde gives you a full screen view of your program monitor, what's called your program monitor, which is up top here. Now you can be selected on any of the tiles and if you click command tilde, it will bring up the program monitor in full screen. But now if I'm, if I'm clicked on the program monitor and I just hit the tilde key without control, you'll see it brings up that actual tile. So then I can toggle tilde to bring up the tile. Now if I click on my timeline and I click the tilde key, it will bring up my timeline in full screen. And if I click over here on the project bin, then it will bring up the project bin in full screen. Now this is a great way to navigate through things when you when you need to look at a lot of effects and say, let's say on this clip, I was doing a keyframe here, then when I click the tilde key, I can bring up the whole keyframes and everything just by one click. But then if I go back to command tilde, then it brings up the program monitor in full. So when I'm reviewing, I always command tilde and I always try and watch it in full screen so I can pick up what's going on and what's happening in the edit and in the video. So guys, that's all I have time for for today, but hopefully you got something out of this basics edit or Premiere Pro basics tutorial video, whatever you want to call it. I hope you got some uh, value out of it and hopefully you can see a little bit about how easy it really is to use once you get in and start using it. And I would encourage you to just open up the program, have a look at the link I'll put below to the video I did where I just show you a little bit about how I cut footage and you can get a bit more of a feel for the program. But yeah, hopefully this has uh, helped you. If it has, make sure you like and subscribe for more content. And if you had any questions about Premiere Pro, please leave them down in the comments below so that I can get back to you and I can comment uh, and I can do another video maybe based off your comments. And yeah, just let you know about uh, more ways that you can benefit and grow and up your game, up your creativity within Premiere Pro in all things video production. All right, you guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. That's all from me today. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.